delighted to pass this over now to Brian and to Andre, who's going to do a live coffee session with you this morning for your break. We'll see you a little bit later on. Otherwise, have fun and enjoy your coffee. Good morning, and welcome to our guided coffee coffee tasting this morning. I'm joined by Andre from uh, Double Shot Coffee, who's going to walk us through a tasting of El Posta. Uh, or any coffee that you happen to have with you. He's also going to demonstrate some brewing techniques and uh, talk to us in general about coffee. So if you do have questions that you would like to have passed along to Andra for answers, please put them in the Q&A section of the chat here. So uh, Andra, why don't you start by telling us a little about how you're going to brew today's coffee, how you made that choice, and uh, where we're going from here. Yes. Hello. Good morning, guys. I hope you're enjoying your morning cup of coffee. Uh, I'm Andre from uh, Specialty Coffee Roastery Double Shot, which is uh, based here in Prague. And I'm glad to be here today uh, in our newly renovated Cafe Mushali Kavi. So this is first time. Can anybody see it? So uh, it's a little bit of sneak peek in new cafe. And uh, we spent today about half an hour together uh, talking about coffee. At the beginning, I uh, introduced you the coffee and the coffee farmer. Then I show you uh, how to brew it in a Clever Dripper, and then there is a space for your questions. Uh, today uh, and tomorrow, this section will be with my colleague Teresa. So uh, you will be tasting another coffee and another brewing method. Uh, as a first, I chose coffee uh, El Poste. It's a farm located at the north of uh, Nicaragua, and it's owned by Montenegro family. And we didn't choose this coffee by accident. Uh, uh, the Montenegro family has a really strong uh, story behind it. And as you may, maybe uh, know, uh, at the November, there was uh, two uh, heavy hurricanes which hit it, the Central America, which was followed by floods and landslides. So our friend Benjamin from Honduras uh, are, he is doing uh, fundraising for rebuilding and uh, relocating homes of coffee farms families. So we put this coffee into the donation edition, so this uh, charity edition coffee, and we already raised about 5,000 US dollars for this fundraising, thanks to you and thanks to our customers. So thank you. Well, uh, the story of Montenegro family, as I said, is really strong because over the past 20 years, they almost lost the farm three times. First, uh, they were also hit by hurricanes, uh, then uh, followed by uh, financial crisis. And when they overcome this, uh, this uh, strangest, uh, they have to cut all the coffee trees because they were uh, affected by Roya. Well, it is a uh, coffee fungus which attacks the coffee plants and they almost like die. So, but uh, to, be, to, be, uh, to be positive, the coffee is tasting really great from this, uh, the, from this uh, family. Uh, they have, uh, their farm is about 60 hectares and half of it is uh, planted by coffee. A second pa part is uh, planted by tomatoes. So off season, of coffee season, they produce also the ketchup. <laughs> the coffee you are tasting today, it's a washed uh, katura, which was harvested last March. And it was processed by washed process, what means the coffee cherry was pulped and then the coffee beans were fermented over 40 hours in fermentation tanks. Then coffee was washed in a water uh, channel and then dried on raised African beds. So this process gives to coffee really bright uh, fruitiness of yellow fruits. It has really nice maple syrup uh, sweetness. And um, I really like about this coffee, the herbal finish of uh, lime balm. So maybe let's start with the brewing. I show you the coffee dripper. Uh, this clever dripper is really simple and a clever device. Uh, it combines simplicity of uh, French press 
and uh, coffee clarity uh, of uh, filtered coffee. So, first of all, I boil the water and rinse the paper filter to preheat the brewer and also rinse the paper filter for the paper paper taste. I discard the water. And then I add 30 mils of water, which is off boil. Sorry, uh, 300 milliliters. I'm using scale to be exact. Then I add 20 grams of coffee. and mix it properly so all grounds are saturated by water and let it steep for two minutes. Uh, maybe you are curious why I'm adding water first and uh, coffee second. Uh, usually this, you brew it, you put coffee first, then water, but sometimes it happened to us that the filter, a coffee filter, no, paper filter get clogged and coffee stop drawing. So we developed this technique to uh, make it more uh, efficient and faster. A grind size that you're using? The grind size is, uh, it's called a medium grind size. And I, it's, it's like granulated sugar, you know, you know, it's, uh, uh, so it's not coarse, powder and it's not, not super yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you can also put lid on top to keep the temperature uh, not cooling down so fast. Your, your brewing method in this, it, it keeps the coffee immersed in the water. So it's, yes, it's, it's so, immersion. Like I'm using a French press and so it, it kind of feels the same way. Okay. Yes, it's, it's uh, immersion brewer. So it's, it's almost the same uh, like French press but there is a small uh, valve on the bottom and when we put it on, uh, on a mug, the, the valve is released and coffee starts drawing down through the paper filter. So it's more, uh, clar there is a more clarity than in a French press. There is a no uh, coffee, coffee dust in, in your mug. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so after two minutes, I, uh, break the crust and mix the coffee again and let it steep for another one minute. Well, this uh, this coffee method for me, it's my, one of my favorite because it's really simple. Usually I, I put the water, coffee in, go to brush my teeth and after that I just put it on my mug and, and uh, the coffee is ready so it's not not complicated to prepare it and I also really like to give it as a gift to my friends because I know they will use it and it will be it, it, it's not forgotten in uh, your uh, in your kitchen anywhere so and after the minute I just put it on the muck and starts draining. It takes about 30 seconds, so it's really fast. Ah, because one of the questions that we got was um, around the draw time. So is, are you able to control the draw time or is it is it just gravity fed and it'll draw? It's just gravity. Okay. Uh, you can maybe slightly control it by grind size, but uh, uh, the important thing is uh, to, not have the coffee so fine, so the paper filter didn't get clogged. Yeah. Waiting on the uh, coffee to draw. Um, common, David has asked also a question here, are there common mistakes people do during filtered coffee preparation um, that you would want people to stop doing, like things that you've seen or, or tips and tricks here? Well, 
the many many questions are about how many coffee uh, how much coffee to use and how much water to use and there is a simpler uh, simple recipe you have to use 60 grams of coffee for one liter of water so that's the basic recipe when you start uh, start with yeah off my French press because it had finished while you were you were yeah. drawing down your dripper and the coffee is ready as you can see it's really fast and easy are there Do any the, questions yeah uh, does the clever come in a larger size if you wanted to make two cups I'm not trying to yes, sell the clever yes, uh, there is a clever in many household. sizes uh, I have uh, at home also like a small single cup 200 milliliters this is about 400 milliliters and I think they have also like 600 milliliters so uh, yeah there is a uh, there are many options uh, to share your coffee as well cool sorry I got kicked out by accident from the software apparently I shouldn't ask questions about clever drippers um <laughs> well uh maybe uh, i can introduce uh how we source maybe good coffee because uh we celebrated last year 10 10 years anniversary and uh maybe people are not familiar with the term of uh specialty coffee uh basically specialty coffee is you have a range from zero to 100 points when the coffee is uh, above 80, 80 points it can be called as a specialty coffee uh, from whole world coffee production it's about five percent so it's a really s slight amount of the best you can you can taste and and we are really focused on long-term partnerships with uh, our producers so they are uh, coffee farmers we work uh, with uh, them like 10 years for example Carlos Imachi uh, you will be tasting tomorrow so with this guy we 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 are working from the very beginning so for us it's really important to to have those uh, long-term partnerships and um, this 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 way of uh, buying coffee is called also like direct trade, where is really important the transparency. So you you know about the coffee, the coffee variety, uh, the coffee processing, when the coffee was harvested, where, and who who are the people behind the coffee. That's that's really important to us. That, that's really nice to. Know. So the, the rest of the coffee is, I'll say, just bulk bought and then becomes the, the rest of the, the coffee that we run into in the universe, I'm assuming. Um, one of the questions that I had for you uh, was on your website, uh, this is one of your coffees that you categorized, I believe, as a filter coffee. And you've got yes. um, other coffees that you call espresso coffees. And I was yes. curious, how, what is like the difference? Like if I use the espresso coffee in my French press, is the universe going to collapse or something? no no it, it will be not collapse but uh we we uh the, the difference between espresso roast and roast for filter coffee is that uh espresso roast uh, coffee is a little bit darker so the coffee is more soluble because you have you, you need to extract uh, the coffee in less uh less amount of time so in espresso, you have uh, 30 seconds to extract it. In brewed coffee, you have uh, four minutes. So that's the, the, that's the difference between those categories of the coffee. But if you pour it as a French press, it can be just a little bit like a darker, darker flavors in your coffee. Little, maybe a little bit roasty, as we call it. But universe will be not collapsed. <laughs> so um, in our, our last uh, moments here, I know we've got about I think it's about five or ten minutes left in this program. Uh, do you want to walk us through what we should be tasting if we're tasting this coffee? Or is there a way that we should taste coffee from the cup in order to try and get the full body of the coffee in our mouth? Yeah, there is a way. We call it like um, the coffee is tasting like a cupping. We use like a large spoon and maybe 
and you, you like do this. It's <laughs> it's really loud, but um, you can like hit all the flavor or, or your flavor palette in your mouth, so you can taste uh, the best from the coffee. Yeah. You know, because because your taste is uh, mostly based on your um, nose, like smell. Yeah. Uh, so it's in your mouth, it's connected. And what stands out for you from this coffee flavors when you taste it? Once again, please. Uh, what kind of flavors are you experiencing from this coffee? Well, definitely, as I, uh, as I said, it's uh, yellow fruits like uh, apricots. Uh, the sweetness is like maple syrup with uh, pecan nuts. You know, you know uh, those uh, pastry pecan nuts and uh, maple syrup. It tastes like this, and slightly herbal finish. Uh, like uh, I think I th think it's called lime balm. It's. I'm not sure uh, I know that, but then I don't know all of my herbs. I will I will freely it's, confess it, that. It, it's, it's, it's a herb which tastes a little bit like uh, lemon, limes. Uh, yeah. Usually my grand, grandma uh, uses for tea when we were sick, so. Oh. <laughs> well, so, it's, so it's a health coffee. Um. <laughs> yes, definitely. Coffee is healthy. <laughs> well, I, I know from from looking at our chat here, we we've gotten some folks who've joined us from the west coast of the United States this this Ooh. early in their morning. So at least one of them's already on his second pot of coffee. So hopefully, this medicinal coffee, if you will, will will help him because he <laughs> he got the uh, El Posta as well. Um, cool, cool. If you wanted to set us up for something to think about uh, for preparing coffee tomorrow, whether it's the uh, Colombian bacha that we're going to do together with Teresa or just in general, what advice would you give somebody to maybe change their prep for tomorrow morning? Uh, once again, uh, what advice would you give somebody if they wanted to make a simple change in how they approach their coffee tomorrow um, to, you know, move their life forward a little bit more in coffee? Whew. Well, <laughs> maybe uh, filter your water because the, the, the water is really important for brewing coffee because it's like 99% of your cup of coffee. So I usually use the, uh, the home filtration uh, kettle, uh, usually uh, Brita, BVT, so it really improves uh, taste of your coffee and also uh, taste of your tea. Yeah, so yeah. that's that that's maybe underrated uh, part of the coffee. It, it's funny. I did that several years ago here. I live in Brno, the best city in the Czech Republic, and, um, and unfortunately, we have a lot of calcium in our water here um, yeah. because, again, we're best city in the Czech Republic. We're taking it to ten, but uh, I use a Brita to filter my water, and it has actually improved the coffee and the the tea greatly in our house. Yes, uh, and in Brno, there is a really hard water. Yeah. And also maybe uh, for grinding coffee uh, to use the burr grinder, not, not the video blades, but with the burr. So it produces much more, uh, much more um, uh, even, I think is the, the word you look for. Yeah, the, 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 the same. Coffee particles are the same. Mm -hmm. uh, when you are grinding uh, on, uh, on the blades, it's depend on the time it you you spend uh, with the video right here. Um, <laughs> and I, I just noticed we had a question from Manuel, and I apologize, I missed it earlier. Um, they were asking about the clever dripper. Um, what's the rough diameter of the cup that you use with that? Because they were, I think they're thinking about getting one, and they want to make sure it fits their favorite coffee mug. With the cup at the bottom, what's the diameter? The bottom. The diameter. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, I don't know <laughs> what is the diameter, but it almost fits on uh, on all the uh, all the mugs I have at home. So it's really it's really wide. So you can put small cup, larger cup. So.
So it really doesn't depend on. Oh, cool. Okay. And this uh, Clever Dripper, you can use uh, the most widely spread coffee filters, which is uh, size four, and you can find them almost in every and in, in every shop with the home uh, home uh, home uh, equipment. But I usually recommend to use uh, the ones we have also on our eShop, or it's from uh, Netherlands because they have they are uh, flavor neutral. Uh -huh. So there is no uh, paper paper taste in your coffee. Um, yeah. So we we've had another question, which is: Is the Clever Dripper like a C70? And I'm not sure what a C70 is. I don't know what is C70. Uh, I, I know C70 is, uh, is a. Well, I don't know what the Z C seventy is. I'm sorry. Must be some wacky we, California we, we, thing. We have a V sixty. Uh huh. <laughs> which is uh, another uh, really popular uh, coffee brewer from uh, Japan. And it looks really similar. Yeah, it looks really similar to, to C70, as uh, my colleague showed me. So it's uh, the, the, the biggest difference is in the valve. So you can see maybe if we zoom it, there is a small valve which opens and close. So it's not uh, uh, the gravity is not here. The the main thing, uh, in, like in a pour over coffee. Uh huh. And and Phil has also clarified. It looks like you saw the same thing that the the V sixty and the C seventy are very similar. So the valve it's is similar. There is a maybe slight different in a shape and in a in a diameter of the hole on the bottom of the brewer. Cool. So um, I'll bring us to a close with a request of you and a request of our audience. Um, to our audience, I ask you, post pictures of your coffee experience. What did you drink from? How did you choose to brew it? What did you brew if you didn't brew the El Posto with us? Put those on uh, Twitter, your favorite social medias, etc. Please tag DevConf. Perhaps it'll show up in the next daily review. Also, um, to you, I would ask, uh, we had a question in the chat about whether Teresa would be willing to show us something both with a dripper style or a filter style, but also maybe something like an AeroPress. So perhaps you could talk to your colleague and see if that's something that's an option for her. Um, and if she can, that'd be great. Yeah, I definitely we can figure it out for you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Um, this has been a lot of fun. It's a great cup of coffee. Thank you very much for helping us put together the package of coffees for people to join us for a, a, an in-home group shared experience. I hope everyone has enjoyed their coffee this morning and is looking forward to more conference. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Enjoy your coffee.